everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. I'm using this uh, uh, wireless microphone. So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, how to make our Joomla website perform uh, as best as possible uh, so that we can uh, deal with the scenarios of uh, uh, many millions of uh, visitors on our website. So for this matter, we're going to see all possible aspects that get involved in this procedure. So, uh, I'm not going to bore you with too many slides, it's just uh, 10 slides, all the basics, uh, and we can see them uh, hands-on, some, uh, some of the websites that we've built as uh, Comrade. Comrade is my uh, second company, uh, which builds Joomla websites. And, uh, and see all the things that we will discuss uh, in the first uh, 10 slides uh, in action. So, what is covered in this uh, session? Uh, we're going to see the basic principles of web, web content delivery. We're going to prepare our Joomla website uh, to, accept, uh, to accept many users, many, many millions of users. And uh, we're going to see how we can optimize our template, our content, and configure our hosting. The basic principles of web content delivery. As you can understand, uh, the closer the server is to the user, the better. That, that goes down to the DNS lookups. When someone uh, uh, hits your website, for example, Joomla.org, uh, say from uh, Athens, Greece, uh, the, uh, the connection, as you can understand, travels through Europe to the US, and uh, once the uh, server has been uh, resolved, then the content starts getting back to the user. So, uh, the, the smaller the distance to the server, uh, the faster the speed of the, of the website. So, uh, if, if, if the server is closer to the user geographically, then uh, it's, uh, it's one step uh, forward to have your website uh, uh, act better. But even if that's not the case, we can only use, we can always uh, use uh, a CDN, a content delivery network, uh, which, gonna, which we're going to see the uh, concept of it uh, later on in the presentation. So how, bro how browsers actually work? Uh, so whenever you visit Joomla.org, for example, you actually uh, retrieve content from the Joomla server uh, by two HTTP connections per domain at a time. So that means if your website, uh, if, if the Joomla server is uh, actually everything is hosted on the www.joomla.org uh, domain, then we retrieve all images, all CSS files, all JavaScript files, at uh, streams of uh, at double streams at a time. So, if in general we have like uh, 100 files uh, making up our web page, then that means that uh, the browser is pinging the server about 50 times uh, forth and back. So, uh, we can. Uh, what we have to do to optimize this is uh, use a CDN network and subdomains. Uh, so that way, uh, the browser can see more sources and uh, download content uh, with uh, more connections than the standard uh, two, which is a default uh, uh, fix for all browsers. We can also combine our CSS files and our JavaScript files, not together CSS and JavaScript, all CSS files in one, all JavaScript files in one. So we minimize the HTTP requests. Uh, time, the uh, uh, connections that the, server, that the browser has to do to the server so that we can retrieve the content back. And of course, uh, if we build our website properly and uh, we separate the actual layout from the content, then uh, we can combine the layout images into sprites and use CSS to smartly uh, bring up these uh, images and make them uh, part of the layout. Another thing that we, can, that we have to know is that all modern browsers accept compressed content that is uh, sent from the server. That means uh, all HTML, the document, uh, CSS files, JavaScript files can all be compressed 
like uh, compressing some uh, files to zip format and send uh, to the browser. The browser will then uh, understand that these files are coming compressed and will decompress them. So in this case, uh, we, we can uh, uh, have these files that we easily make for like you know, three or four hundred kilobytes in a website's uh, weight uh, drop down to a hundred kilobytes or less. So as you can see, the ratio, the, uh, you know, the compression ratio can be four to one. Even, even better in some cases. So we're going to uh, see how we can uh, work on all these on these three uh, facts and uh, optimize our website, our Joomla website, uh, for better performance. So in order for us to do so, to do all these uh, all these work, we have to prepare some tools for this work. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that uh, uh, having Firebug and Web Developer Toolbar on Firefox is a, a godsend because uh, you, you can actually measure all sorts of things like the actual uh, page weight, you can see all sources, images, CSS files, JavaScript files, and you can use uh, Firebug to actually monitor how these uh, files uh, get downloaded and at which time. So uh, we have we have uh, almost uh, built our Joomla website, and uh, we always start with some basic uh, principles uh, before we finish it up. First of all, we, uh, we enable the built-in cache mechanism. Uh, this, uh, what, what the cache mechanism does in Joomla is that it produces uh, static HTML uh, documents of uh, the contents that get retrieved from the database. So as you can understand, the server does not query the database every time some visitor comes into your website. Uh, it just retrieves <coughs> static HTML file from the cache folder. So this is way faster than uh, creating the database, and uh, it's also more resource friendly. <coughs> we, of course, enable Gunzip. Gunzip is the, uh, the functionality in uh, Apache servers to compress uh, files like HTTP, uh, like uh, sorry, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. However, uh, Gunzip in uh, Joomla actually compresses only the document the HTML, the actual thing that gets rendered. So if, for example, your first page is cast and weighs like uh, 30 kilobytes as HTML pure, I'm not talking about the images, then the uh, GZ mechanism will throw this down to like 5 kilobytes. One important thing we also have to consider when building a website is uh, the extensions we choose. We must make sure, especially if we're talking about Puma 1.5, that these uh, extensions uh, properly separate layout from uh, uh, and behavior from content. That means that they follow the MVC pattern, so we can easily uh, restyle them in our template folder without messing with any files. So in this case, we can easily take the CSS and JavaScript files, if any, and uh, put them uh, within our uh, template, all within uh, the structure of our template, meaning uh, the tricks I'm going to show you later on on how to compress the CSS files, the JavaScript files, and wherever they are in the website. Now, these modules, uh, if, if we're talking about modules, uh, they have to be uh, cast in order to participate in the whole caching mechanism of Joomla and have uh, uh, your uh, HTML static files uh, within the cache folder. Uh, containing uh, as much as possible, as much dynamic data as possible. However, caching is not always good, and uh, it's something that we do not recommend uh, for the main menu module that you want comes in with, because there's slight. It's not, it's not a bug; it's a way of uh, performing. You will not, uh, if if the content of the mod main menu is cast, uh, you can have the active highlight feature. The menu. So your, your visitors will not be able to know <laughs> what page they are. But this is something we can uh, we can live with. So uh, essentially, all the work that is done on Joomla to make it perform better is on the template, and uh, secondly, in our content. Like I said, if we combine and compress using GZ our CSS and JS files, 
uh, we can significantly uh, lower the time that uh, our website loads uh, on uh, our browser. This uh, does not only come down to uh, smaller files, but it, uh, it also uh, comes down to the fact that you actually uh, feed the browser with, uh, with less files to process, so it's, uh, it's uh, a little bit faster. Some say that uh, it is uh, better to, uh, to pack your JavaScript code if you, if you know the concept of packing. That means rewriting some variables to shorten the entire code. Uh, in networks, uh, maybe such as successful packet, which can uh, significantly minimize the file size of JavaScript files. But if we, if we use JavaScript, if we uh, compress our JavaScript files, we won't need to pack our JavaScript code. Uh, and we don't even need to minify the code. That means uh, remove any white space. So uh, following some very simple principles when we're developing our templates, we can easily uh, use uh, small snippets of PHP code to compress all CSS files, JavaScript files uh, within our website. As you know, it's uh, always preferred to use one library or framework. That comes down to not having conflicts. Uh, if you use Moontools and jQuery, for example, uh, they can easily conflict together. Uh, since uh, 1.5, 2.5 to the path of uh, using Moontools, it's always best uh, to use Moontools as well on uh, any of our modules or plugins or whatever. Now, since we're using Moontools, and uh, Bluetooth has uh, some uh, smart mechanisms to initiate the JavaScript code uh, without having to load it at the bottom of the document. Uh, we can easily put everything, the CSS files and the JavaScript files, at the head of the document, which means that the content, uh, the website, the actual website, is uh, uh, rendered properly on the first load. So you won't see images like breakup or unstyled code. And this is a good thing. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, the layout and how our web, our web page is going to look, we have to define uh, what is part of the actual uh, the grid that holds the content, the layout, and what is part of the content itself. So imagine if you have uh, a news portal website, the, lay the content images are the actual article images, and everything else, except banners perhaps, should be layout images. That means they should be uh, images uh, stored as background, uh, referenced as background images within the CSS file. Uh, this has uh, two advantages. We can use large images, adding all our non repeating images, background images within it. And using some simple CSS uh, techniques, we can actually uh, move this big image. This is called the CSS sprite. So we have one image to load. Like we like we packed our CSS and JavaScript files, we now it's like packing our layout images uh, all into one, and we can uh, use CSS to reposition this big image uh, wherever we want in our layout. Now uh, we've covered the layout, we've covered CSS and JavaScript, which can all be uh, we some sort of comp uh, compressed. Uh, we can, uh, like I told you, uh, we have to separate our uh, content images from the layout images. And uh, now the thing that we can do to optimize these images uh, to perform better, that we have uh, a smaller file size. Uh, uh, use some, some sort of mechanism like a plugin or just allow uh, uh, content editors to resize and resample the images in some uh, uh, graphic uh, editor program like Photoshop. Of course, the second uh, thing is kind of difficult, so it's easy for us to create some plugin and again with a uh, few lines of PHP code uh, do the actual content image resizing. That means your editors may uh, upload like one megabyte images, and we can have plugin that actually uh, resizes, resamples the image, and uh, uh, fits it exactly as uh, the design uh, uh, the design wants. Or uh, 
uh, tells you know uh, how the process should be uh, on the page. So uh, so far, I've told you that we actually want two code snippets. So far, one is for compressing uh, the CSS and JavaScript files, and the other one is uh, <coughs> PHP used in a plugin to resize images. As we're talking about images, we always have to understand uh, what kind of uh, formats we want to use. Uh, like uh, GIFs, or PNGs, or JPEGs. It's, uh, it's always, it's, it, you have to understand what your layout uh, needs. Uh, for example, if you have solid colors uh, being part of your uh, uh, template, uh, you obviously don't have to use uh, uh, images, but if these uh, solid color, uh, colors mix with uh, uh, illustration graphics, then it's best for you to uh, save, for example, your images to GIF or PNG format, as the overall file size will be will be less than JPEGs, and uh, it will not pixelize, as we say, uh, meaning that the overall uh, uh, image quality will be better. <coughs> of course, if you have uh, images uh, taken from photographs. Uh, photo agency, Even these are content images used in uh, uh, our website. Of course, you must have JPEG uh, resolution, uh, JPEG uh, format, because it's uh, JPEG generally performs better for images for, for photographs. So, after we take care of all these uh, things, we essentially start. Uh, building everything up on our template. It's uh, a good thing to enable debugging in Joomla. So uh, after we've picked up all the modules and the plugins, we can see uh, how they run their queries on the database and uh, use some uh, very, very easy mechanisms to identify the, uh, the, the ones that perform badly. So we've, we've left now the content uh, part and we're going to the actual process. And uh, the final thing that we're going to do in our template is uh, replace the URLs to point to some domains or CDNs. Uh, what I forgot to tell you before is that you can easily uh, create, if you don't have a CDN, a common delivery network like Akamai, uh, to make your website serve uh, more HTTP connections to the browser. You can, for example, we have uh, Joomla is storing uh, all images in the images storage uh, folder. We can easily use a subdomain that points to images storage and call this subdomain, for example, uh, images.mydomain.com. Then uh, we can use a third snippet of uh, ESP code to dynamically replace all URLs as they are rendered in our template and uh, change all references from uh, mydomain.com slash images slash stories to images.mydomain.com So if we do this, for every subdomain that we do this, we gain uh, two more HTTP connections uh, serving uh, to the browser. So if we do this specific uh, example that I told you about the images, we don't serve content with two HTTP connections, which is the default for the browser, because we have one source our website, our uh, uh, www uh, website, we can serve with four HTTP connections because we've just added another source. The browser sees the subdomain as a different source and uh, so it can uh, request uh, uh, content uh, simultaneously. So we use a third snippet of PHP code to dynamically replace uh, the URLs as they are rendered in our template to point to these subdomains or to a CDN uh, system. And of course, uh, after we do all this, we come down to hosting. We have to configure our hosting so that uh, MySQL, since MySQL is preferred uh, database for Joomla, has to be optimized depending on our needs and the target audience. That means we may have MySQL running on the same web server, or we may have MySQL running on a different server, acting as database uh, only. Uh, and of course, like I said, this comes down to our needs. Uh, just, just so you know, MySQL is a very memory-hungry uh, application. 
So if, if your target audience is uh, supposed to be uh, uh, dozens of millions of uh, page views per month, then it's always nice. Uh, it's, it's a smart move to have two web servers, one acting as uh, uh, web content uh, and delivery, the other one as database, and you use the CDN That can save you lots of money when it comes to hosting. We can use uh, CDN for images, CSS and JavaScript files, as well as other static content delivery. Uh, the concept of the CDN, the content delivery network, uh, is actually a very smart uh, technique uh, which we can use to geographically serve content to our users, uh, depending on the uh, uh, distance from this CDN network of our servers. Uh, to make it more, uh, to explain it better. Imagine that we have our web server uh, in Dallas, in the US, and uh, our main target audience uh, is in France. So uh, whenever our, France, uh, vis our French visitors uh, ping the website, they actually uh, go outside of France to the US and uh, come and get back in, which is uh, uh, it's not so good because, uh, like I said in the beginning, we have bigger DNS lookups. So it's uh, we always you know we lose uh, performance uh, from this. <coughs> for, a, for every connection, for every single download of the browser, does has to ping the server first. So if we use a content delivery network, it, uh, we are actually uh, commissioning a whole uh, uh, network of servers spread in the entire world, depending of course on the CDN provider. And we can uh, serve specific content or our entire website through this uh, CDN network. What does that mean? It means that, for example, uh, we use uh, soft layer services. It's uh, one of the big data centers in the US. And they uh, utilize the CDN network of level three. It's a telecommunications company like Akamai. So uh, this company, level three, has servers in France. And if we hook up, uh, the level 3 CDN onto our uh, web server in Dallas, then we can uh, tell our, uh, we can tell the CDN network to fetch all the uh, static files, the images, the CSS, the JavaScript, uh, video files, uh, flash elements, uh, and it, uh, the CDN picks all these files up at a specified interval. It's like having someone uh, querying your website uh, every time. It mirrors all these files across the network, and then uh, when some visitor, when the French visitor visits the American uh, server, it only loads the HTML of the website, the actual document that you see, but all, everything else, the CSS file, JavaScript, the images, are, lo are loaded faster to him uh, from a server that's close to France, or uh, within France. Uh, the CDN network can actually uh, determine the geographic location of the user, not the geographic location, it can determine um, what server from its network is closer to the user and serve content from this uh, server. So, uh, using the CDN, we are not uh, tied to having the, uh, you know, hosting our websites into our country, because uh, let's face it, the Americans are professional, uh, very professional with this. And they have uh, great, uh, uh, great structures to provide all this uh, hosting uh, without ever failing. Like I said before, uh, if our target audience is uh, demanding that uh, if we expect to have millions of uh, visitors per month, then it's uh, we can save lots of money uh, if we split our setup in two servers. It's something that uh, we as Common uh, have used for two websites that we've built, uh, Juma websites, which are, uh, I think they are around among the 10 top, 10 most uh, websites ever built with Joomla. So uh, we can have a very uh, cheap setup by using a web server, a database server, and a CDN network, which can uh, come to, which can lead to a cost of say uh, $2,000 per month. When, if we weren't using a CDN, and we were using a, st a stack of servers with load balancing, that cost would be six or seven thousand dollars a month. So you can see that in a year we save uh, uh, many thousands of dollars. So, I'm not going to 
I'm showing you what we did for Legendo. It's uh, one of the most popular sports websites in Greece. Okay, so as uh, wrapping up the things that we talked about earlier, you see that we're using a uh, uh, one library, one of the library, which we actually load from Google. That means that we gain two ways to connections doing this. 
and then we load everything else from a CDN. You see the paths? They're all loaded, all these files are loaded from a CDN. As you can see, we point uh, everything specific folders after gz.gr, uh, like the template folder. We point them to the CDN layer, and thus uh, we gain uh, the benefits of using uh, a CDN to, uh, to serve content. You will also notice that uh, we're using a single CSS file here. And uh, the actual document that you see, which is the HTML, it's all being compressed with uh, GC. And so are the, uh, the JavaScript and the CSS uh, files. I'm going to open this up in uh, Firefox to show you the, some measurements. does the job of, for this job of uh, taking all the banners and uh, serving them from the Google infrastructure all from one location. So we, uh, we also gain from this because we have uh, less outside sources to uh, retrieve content. So I'm going to uh, show you now. and uh, Firebank, we use Web Developer Toolbar to see the uh, uh, structure of our website, uh, listed as uh, CSS file, file, file uh, HTML documents, flash objects, and uh, any other static files that can make up our website. So we can determine the sources and uh, decide if we want to do some sort of CDN or uh, uh, move some of the elements uh, into some domains.
So I'm going to come down to the PHP code that we need to uh, do these uh, compressions and uh, replacements. Uh, it's actually very easy. We don't have to modify the server to do anything for us. Uh, as long as uh, we know that our Apache server supports uh, GZ, we can uh, create a PHP file. create a PHP file that includes all these uh, CSS files, for example, or the JavaScript files. We pass onto this file the HTTP headers to tell the browser that uh, our PHP file is actually a CSS file or a JavaScript file. And we can serve, we can uh, imagine, I'm sure you all know what includes are in uh, PHP, right? So uh, we actually have this container code. We have this PHP file uh, with some uh, few PHP code snippets, and we include the CSS files uh, within this one. So uh, we can actually uh, have we don't, act, we don't actually need to have everything in one CSS file, for example, because we use modules, we use plugins. We can just reference these files into this one big CSS file and uh, compress. The output. And we can do the same thing with uh, JavaScript as well. So as you can see here,
we can not only host uh, our static files on the CDN, we can actually uh, host the entire website. This is something that, uh, as far as I know, uh, only Akamai offers uh, this solution at the moment. Uh, so you actually, it's like uh, Akamai's uh, CDN paints your website, the entire website, and it matches everything. So uh, you're, you, you may have a low spec server, which is being painted by the Akamai CDN network. Uh, so it's like having your website visited by just one user. Then Akamai uh, stores everything, caches everything, all the pages, and uh, displays uh, static files to your uh, visitors. The culprit using Akamai's system is that you can't have uh, sessions. You can't have, uh, you know, you cannot have your users logging in because you, because this is dynamic content. It's not something that can be cached, or at least it cannot be done. Easily. So, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to ask? Yeah. You do, um, if you make a change in your template, for example, change the background image, uh, how, does, how long does it take uh, before it's online, because of the caching and uh, other servers? Uh, we said before that uh, if we, we need to separate our images, uh, which are layout images, which are content images. So if we put as much layout images as possible, into the CSS file, that means if we make them background images, then we have the advantage of actually uh, uh, the browser caching the CSS file and the, uh, the images and uh, displaying it faster. It's a lot faster for the browser uh, to display the images this way uh, compared to having the images uh, in line, as we say. So the, uh, these images once these images, which make up the layout, are cast, because uh, they are referenced uh, in the CSS file, they're not retrieved, re-retrieved from the browser. The only thing that gets uh, retrieved is uh, the actual content in the middle or anything else that, that is not, has not yet been uh, cast. So what's, what's how it, the page is rendered? This, this part, for example, didn't flicker at all. This means that uh, the browser has cast these elements because uh, uh, generally the browser caches content, uh, whatever content is referenced from the CSS file a lot better than it would if it was referenced in the HTML file. And it does that with uh, the JavaScript code as well. I think, I think what it means is how quickly I think what it means is how quickly is that image that's already in the cache directory or in the cache, how quickly is it refreshed when you change something to it yes. and then reflect it back into the page, into the layout. You mean if you change your actual limits yeah. and yeah. Uh, switch it with some... Uh, this uh, goes down to what solution you're using. If you, if you have a CDN uh, which uh, picks, picks up all the images at an interval of 10 seconds, and by the time you upload your image and switch back to the page, uh, it's already part of the CDN network. Uh, this, this is the good thing about CDN networks. Uh, you can actually um, tell them to retrieve at different uh, intervals specific uh, elements or files from your web page. And uh, if you want to test out the concept of a CDN, I strongly advise you to have a look. Have a look at the Coral CDN. It's uh, the first open source uh, CDN project. And you can uh, quickly test it out to see how your website will perform like this. So uh, the Coral CDN, it is an open source project like I told you, like Juma is, uh, only requires that you append the dot nyud dot net address to anything. So if we have, for example, we have Google like this, and uh, if I append to the URL this, then it gets retrieved from uh, Coral CDN. It may be a bit slow in the beginning because it's the first time that it's uh, retrieving the content to cache it.
But if you use it on a regular basis, if you have uh, your website set up with this uh, open source VM, uh, you can easily uh, tell that your website is actually performing uh, a lot better. <coughs> Maybe one final question for photos before we head to the next presentation. <coughs> Otherwise, I'd like to thank photos for your presentation on high volume, and again, high traffic. Uh, sorry for uh, you know uh, having the presentation semi-complete due to technical reasons. Uh, Tony, of course, did his best. We will not blame uh, any any Mediterranean uh, 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 uh